today in this video we are going to discuss about the truss or frame we discuss the basic definition of truss we discuss the different type of truss we see some practical example of the trusses which are practically used in many application we see the basic assumption which we assumed during the analysis of truss we see the two methods one is method of joints and other is the method of section and see and understand the step by step procedures how to solve the problem and how to find out the forces in the trusses with the help of these two methods so the truss is defined as a structural frame pin joint at the ends and support the load at the joints so here we see the example of a truss this is a cantilever type of truss because this truss is supported at one end in the wall basically so this is a cantilever type of truss and here we see that this ab the bc cd de and bd are the different members of the truss so this is completely we cantilever truss and the we see that there are different joints these ab member and bc member these different members are joined at point b here we see at point the there three main three members ed bd and dc are you can see connected here so all these connection we assume are of pin joint type basically and there are two external loads one at point c which is 40 kN and other at again at point d which is having the same magnitude at 40 kN load okay so these are called the external loads so this frame basically is used to support the external load okay which is shown in this diagram here and all the members of the frame is pin joint at the different connection at point a b c and d and e so normally there are two kind of trusses one is called the 2d trusses and other is called the three dimensional trusses the two dimensional trusses includes the roof trusses which is normally made of steel or wooden we see the different type of bridges and we see on this side there are different type of frames attached there so they are called the bridge trusses there are some three dimensional trusses okay like electric electricity transmission towers mobile towers and tripod there are few examples of the 2d and 3d truss so here in this slide we discuss the plane and space frame so plane frames are the two dimensional frame and the space frames are three dimensional frame so in plane frame which is a two dimensional frame so the these three examples are shown here in the first examples you see that there is a wooden frame which are used to support the rooftop so they are normally because as a roof truss basically so here you see that these are the frames where different members are joined to support the external load basically and they are used mostly in the hill areas where there are chances of more snow and rains basically in the second in the third one we have the roof trusses again but here we see that this rooftop is supported by a steel frame okay? so they are the metallic frame which are normally used to support the loads so they are called the roof truss but the material used is steel in the middle one we have a bridge truss normally railway bridges or normally the uh, passenger car bridge which we have seen so many places when we are moving in the uh, riverside areas basically so here we see that this is called a, a bridge truss so here in this left side you see uh, one bridge truss is there on the right side you have the trusses and then normally they are used to support the deck basically so whenever any car is moving, whenever any train is moving, it, the, these trusses normally will take the complete load of that particular train basically. So the if you are coming to the space frame, so this is a three dimensional frame like electricity transmission tower. Okay, you will see in the when you are moving to the outside the city, so many type of towers you are seeing where they are joined from one point to the other point and the electrical lines are passing through these trusses basically. So they have the three dimensional truss because they have three dimension okay now similarly we have the mobile towers on which different type of towers are mounted like geo towers airtel towers okay so here there are also the example of the three dimensional trusses other examples are the tripod where already we mount the camera on the top here so this is a so these are the few examples of the three dimensional truss generally there are three type of truss one is called the perfect truss deficient truss and redundant truss so the perfect truss we are calling to that truss which have sufficient number of members 
टू सपोर्ट द लोड जस्ट सफिशियंट नंबर ऑफ मेम्बर ठीक है देर इज नो एडिशनल मेम्बर एंड देर इज नो डिफिशियंसी इन द मेम्बर जस्ट सफिशियंट टू सपोर्ट द कम्प्लीट लोड द सिंपलेस्ट टाइप ऑफ ट्रस्ट इज द ट्रैंगल ट्रस्ट बेसिकली वेयर वी हैव द थ्री मेम्बर्स टू सपोर्ट द लोड बेसिकली नाउ इफ वी इंक्रीज टू मोर मेम्बर्स इन दिस सपोर्ट्स सो दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ए परफेक्टर्स ठीक है नाउ बिकॉज in this in this also there is just sufficient number of members to support the load so this is a necessary condition but this is not a sufficient condition basically uh, for a perfect trust number normally the number of members n should be equal to 2 multiplied by number of joints minus 3 basically so here if we apply this equation in the first trust so here we have the uh, one member we have the second member we have the third member and all these members are pin joint at connection 1 Connection two, connection three, basically. So number of members here on the left side, the value of n is three. If we are coming to the right side, basically, so this is one joint here at connection one. This is the second joint at connection two, and this is the third joint at connection three. So there are three joints. So two into three is equal to six. Six minus three is equal to three. So the right side we got three value. On the left side we have three value. So because this left side value is equal to the right side value, so this is called a perfect. Trust. If you coming to the second examples here, we see that there are one member, there are two member, three member, four and five. There are total five number of members. So the number of members is equal to five on the left side here. If we come to the number of joints, this is first joint, this is the second joint, this is the third joint, and this is the fourth joint. Okay. So there are four joint, four into two. Is equal to eight. Eight minus three is equal to five. So here again on the right side we have five. On the left side we again have five basically. So in this in the in these two examples we will see that the left side should be equal to right side, and this normally we follow this equation. So these two frames are called the perfect frame or perfect trusses. Second trusses are the deficient truss. Deficient truss, as the name indicates, deficient means there should be less number of members in comparison to perfect frame. so to that trust we are calling as a deficient trust and these frames can not retain their shapes means they normally be deformed under the action of load basically so this is the example of a uh, deficient trust if you see the number of members this is first member this is second member this is third and this is fourth so there are four number of members so left side is fourth here and is equal to four if you are talking of the number of joints so number of joint is 1 here 2 here 3 here there are four number of joints so 4 into 2 8 minus 3 means 5 on the left side we have 4 on the right side we have 5 so left side term is number of members are less than the number of members required for perfect frame so right side term is more and the left side term is less here less less left side term is 4 right side term is for that's why we call as a deficient truss In the next one, if the number of member is more than the number of members in perfect frame, then we call as a redundant frame. Means there are extra number of members, extra uh, members to support that particular load. To that we call as a redundant truss. And these trusses cannot be analyzed by the equation of equilibrium only, as we see here in the previous case. And but some more conditions or some more equations are required. So normally. deformation of the frame is also considered in these type of normally frames so this is the example of the redundant frame here so here if we see that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so there are 11 number of members so here n should be equal to 11 if we come to the number of joints this is first joint second third then fourth then fifth and then sixth So there are six number of joint. So six number of joint means there are twelve. Two into six twelve minus is equal to nine. So here we see that left side term is more than the right side term. So left side term is eleven. Right side term is nine. So because left side term is more, left or right side term is less. That's why we call that this is a redundant truss. So here we only discuss about the perfect frame throughout this lecture, throughout this slide basically. So when we analyze the truss. so when the truss is used to support the external load so their members also bear some force that force may be tensile in nature or that may be compressive in nature 
so we assume some direction of forces in uh, in the truss member basically so here this is a truss there are one two three four five six there are seven different members in the truss basically so here if we assume that there is a tensile force in the member so the tensile force in the member is normally shown by inward arrow so there are two arrow you will see and these two arrow are inwards so this means that we assume that the forces or the force in this member is tensile in nature basically in case of the compressive force if the arrow are outward basically then we assume that the force in this particular member is compressive in nature basically so the same analogy we used here as we use in case of this string because this string is not under compression this string is also under tension basically so when the string is also tension means we show the inward arrow inside in the in the string to show the to represent the tensile force in the string basically the same analogy we use here to show the tensile or compressive force in the trusses basically before going before analyzing the trusses we there are certain assumptions we normally we assume so first of all load applies on the joint here so here there are different joints this is the one joint here pin joint second joint pin joint third joint fourth joint pin joint so the load is only apply on the joints okay here we are not applying any load on the members in between only on the joints it can support the load basically wherever we have the joints the load is applied only only at the end joints the ends are pin joint and all the joints all the members are joined with the help of a pin connection so at each and every point there should be a pin connection basically or there is a pin joint the weight of the members because members are made of some materials it may be a wood it may be a steel it may be some other materials so they have some self weight so self weight of the members are neglected so in the different members they have their own self weight the self weight of the members normally we neglect it when we do the analysis of the frames we also assume that the cross section of the different members are uniform if it is a circular in section with diameter d so we see that all the members having the same diameter basically and it is uniform throughout the length of the member so these are the few assumptions which normally we assume while dealing with the uh, frame here in this slide we have to do the analysis of truss by the method of joint the meaning of analysis that is that we have to find out the forces in all the member of the truss a member may contain seven member a member may contain 10 member in each and every member we have to find out the forces this is the meaning of analysis the meaning of method of joint means we have to move from joint to joint or we have to consider the joints only so here we see in this diagram we have see that there are number of joints like c b d e and a so at each and every joint we have to do the analysis basically now first of all we have to find out the support reaction in the first diagram it is shown a Uh, simply support a truss, and here it is a hinge support, and here it is a roller support. So first of all, we have to find out the support reaction. In the second diagram, a cantilever truss is shown to you. In the cantilever truss, we see that the left hand portion of the truss is completely fixed in a structure or in a wall. So that type of truss normally we call as a cantilever truss. It may be a left side or it may be the right side of the truss. If they are completely fixed in a structure or in a wall. So to that truss we are calling as a cantilever truss. In case of the cantilever truss, there is no need to find out the support reaction directly. We start from the free end side basically. Okay. So in this case, no need to find out the reaction at point A or at point E. Directly we can start from the free end means directly we can start from the C point. After that we have to see that at a particular joint, this type of force system is formed normally. So here we see at point C, this 40 kilo newton force. the forces in the member bc the forces in the member cd are passing from the same point basically so they will form a concurrent force system now to find out the forces in the members bc and in the member cd we have two equations of equilibrium summation fx should be equal to 0 and summation fy should be equal to 0 these are the equations for concurrent force system now so we have to do the algebraic summation of forces along the x direction and we do the algebraic summation of forces along the y direction and we put them equal to 0 and we find out the value of the unknown forces so here if we do the algebraic summation of forces along the x direction and we do the algebraic summation of forces along the y direction basically so we can find out the unknown forces in the member bc and in the unknown member cd basically now 
once we do the analysis or once we complete our analysis at point C, then we have to we have to move to the next joint. It may be D joint, it may be B joint, or it may be any other joint basically. But we have to consider the joint where only two forces are unknown. Okay. So if at point C, first of all, why we choose this C? Because at this C there are two unknown forces, one in the member BC and other in the member C D. That's why first we pick the joint C. After that, if we come to the joint, uh, joint D basically, so this 40 kN is the external force. The forces in the member ED is unknown to us. The forces in the member BD is unknown to us. But we know the value of the force in the member CD. So here at this D joint, there are only two unknown forces. And we have the two equations. That's why after this point C, we can move to the point D basically. Once we finding out the value of BD and we find out the value of the ED basically, then we can move to the joint B. Now, this force BC is known to us. This force BD is known to us now. And there are two unknown forces, one in the member AB and other in the member BE. Okay, And we have two equations. So with the help of these two equations, summation Fx should be equal to zero and summation Fi should be equal to zero. We can find out the unknown forces in the members AB and in the member B basically. So this way we see that we have to move from joint to joint. So first of all, we pick the joint C, then we move to the joint D and then we move to the joint basically until the forces in all the members are known to us basically. Okay. So this is the method of joint. Basically. Next is the method of section and we do the analysis by method of section. So first of all, we have to see that where we use method of section. So this method is used when the forces in few member of the truss are to be determined. So let us understand this in this with the help of this figure. This is a simply supported truss which is supported at the end points here at point A and at point O. At point O it is a roll support and at point A it is a hinge support. And there are 27 members in this truss okay, named as AB, BC, CD, DE, BD, DF. FH and EG similarly but out of these 27 members we have to find our forces only in three members that is FH, GH and GI. So out of these 27 members we have to find out the forces only in few members means only in three members that's why we use the method of section. After that we have to find out the support reaction because it is a simply supported truss so in case of this simply supported truss, we have to find out the support reaction. So we have to find out the reaction force at point A and we have to find out the reaction force at point O basically. At point O, it is a roll support. That's why the reaction is totally vertical. At point A, it is a hinge support. There are two reactions. One is the vertical reaction and other is the horizontal reaction. But we see that there is no horizontal force externally apply at the joints of this truss. That's why we say that the horizontal reaction at this hinge support A is zero basically. So if we see the net reaction force at point A, the net reaction force at point A is in the vertical direction. Also at point O, because it's the roll support, the next net reaction is in the vertical direction basically. So under the action of the applied forces, which are shown here at the different joints, and under the action of these reaction forces, this total truss is in the equilibrium condition. Now we see that which type of force system they form. They form the coplanar and non-concurrent force system. So there are three equations of equilibrium. Summation Fx should be equal to zero. Summation Fy should be equal to zero. And summation M should be equal to zero. With the help of these three equations, we have to find out the support reaction. So in continuation to the method of section, the next step is we have to pass a section in such a way that it should not cut more than three members in which the forces are unknown. So here as we discussed out of these 27 members, we have to find out the forces only in three members that is FH, that is GH and GI. So only in these three members, we have to find out the forces. So the next step is we have to pass a section line. So AA is a section line. We have to pass a section line which is passed from these three members in which we have to determine the value of the forces and we have to keep in mind that the section line should not cut more than three members basically. 
ठीक है इन विच द फोर्सेज आर अनोन टू अस एंड दिस सेक्शन लाइन इफ वी सी दिस सेक्शन लाइन कट्स द फ्रेम इन टू टू पार्ट दिस पार्ट इज कॉल द लेफ्ट पार्ट बेसिकली एंड दिस पार्ट इज कॉल द राइट पार्ट बेसिकली in continuation to this method of section as we see that this section line cuts the complete truss into two different parts left part this is the left part shown here and this is the right part basically so we have to consider the equilibrium of the left or the right parts under the action of applied load so now we see that left part there are three applied forces one is at point b other is at point d and third is at point f basically and under the action of the applied forces reaction forces and the forces in the member cut by the section line so we have passed the section line okay the section line is passed in such a way that it should cut three members not more than three members at a time in which the forces are unknown to us so we have the uh, force in the member fh we have the force in the member gh and we have the force in the member ga basically so under the action of this three externally applied force under the action of one reaction force and under the action of the three forces in the three different members this complete left part is in equilibrium condition similarly the right part if we consider the right part is under the action of these four applied forces under the action of this reaction forces and under the action of these forces in the three members this right part is also in the equilibrium condition now we have to see that which type of force system they will form if we consider the left part or if we consider the right part they will form a non concurrent force system and to solve the problem of non concurrent force system we have three equations of equilibrium okay one is summation fx should be equal to 0 other is summation fy should be equal to 0 and summation m should be equal to 0 so with the application of these three equations we can find out the forces in the members fh in the member gh and in the member gi let us understand the complete methodology with the help of an example. So first, we will discuss the method of joint and see how we apply this method to find out the force in all the member of a truss. So here, this is the actual problem where all the dimensions are shown here. And at point B, the two forces are applied. One is in the x direction, positive x direction, whose value is 1 kN, and one is in the negative y direction, whose value is equal to 2 kN. Because of these two forces, we have to find out the force on each and every member of the truss. There are total 13 members, and in each member, we have to find out the value of the forces. So, first of all, what we do, we assume the forces and their nature in each and every member for example in member ab we show the force by fab and because the arrow hairs are inward arrow so we assume that the force is tensile in nature similarly in the member bd the force is fbd and we because we assume the inwards arrow means we assume the tensile force in this member similarly in the member ad we assume tensile force whose value is equal to fad in the member AC, because the arrows are outward, we assume that the force in the member AC is compressive in nature. So arbitrarily, we assume the nature of the forces in each and every member. Okay, and then now let us see how to analyze this. First of all, let us see that there is no need to find out the reaction here because if we see this point B or if we see this joint B, there is one force of 1 kN, one force of 2 kN in the down direction here and one force FAB in the member AB and one force BD in the member BD and all these forces are concurrent in nature so there are two unknown forces so we can apply the equation of summation Fx and summation Fy and find out the value of FAB and FB let us see how to find out so first of all we isolate this point B from here and see all the forces on this point first of all we consider the point b so this is the point b at this point b one force of one kilonewton acting in the positive x direction one force of two kilonewton acting in the down direction here this is the fbd force there are two arrows here this upper error is the direction of force when we consider this point b and when we consider this point d then 
this direction this upper direction will the direction of force basically at point D basically so when we take this point B into consideration so on this B point because this arrow is nearer to that point so this arrow represents the direction of force in member FBD here so this is in the downward direction here this is the direction of FBD force here again this arrow is nearer to this point so this is the direction of the force in member FAB and this is in the negative edge direction the force in the member FB is in the negative direction and the angle because this dimension is 2 meter here and this dimension is also 2 meter here shown here so this angle is 45 degree so already we have marked the angle here 45 degree otherwise we have to find out this angle as such now we write down the two equations summation fx should be equal to 0 and summation fi should be equal to 0 because all the forces form a concurrent force system so when we write down summation fx should be equal to 0 so FAB force is acting in the minus x direction this is minus FAB force the component of FBD also the x component of this FBD also FBD cos 45 also acting in the negative x direction so minus FBD cos 45 the component of 2 kN force is 0 and there is one positive force of 1 kN in the positive that, that should be equal to plus 1 should be equal to 0 so there are two unknown forces FAB and FBD so we have to write down the equation of summation fi should be equal to 0 so the forces the algebraic summation of force in the y direction should be equal to 0 so if we see the force in the y direction so this is a 2 kN force acting in the negative y direction so we take it minus 2 here the component of this FBD force that is FBD sin 45 is also acting in the down direction so minus FBD sin 45 should be equal to 0 so when you find out the value of FBD here, FBD should be equal to minus 2 divided by sin 45. So the value of sin 45 is 1 by root 2. So the value of FBD is minus 2 root 2 kilo newton basically. Now we put the value of FBD in this first equation and find out the value of FAB. The value of F FBD is minus 2 root 2 kilo newton. So we put this value here, the FAB value come out to be 1 plus 2 root 2 divided by 1 upon root 2 that should be equal to 3 kilo newton. Now carefully see here the value of FAB is positive okay? that is 3 kN it means that whatever nature of the force we assume in member FAB okay, that is correct one we assume here a tensile force or the force is tensile in nature in this member FAB and that also comes here positive means whatever assumption we assume that is correct one the force in the member is 3 kN and that is tensile in nature if we see the value of FBD, so FBD forces we assume here tensile in nature, but the FBD force is coming out to be with the minus sign. Means whatever assumption we assume, we assume the tensile force in this member, but the force is not in tensile, the force is compressive in nature, and whose value is equal to 2 root 2 kilo newton. So this way, if arbitrarily you assume any direction, if some direction come out to be with negative sign, means whatever assumption you assume regarding nature of the forces that is opposite to that one basically okay so by considering this joint b the two forces fab and fbd are known to us now after that if we come to suppose point d so at point d this fbd force is known to us because already we have find this value this fad force is unknown to us this fcd force is unknown to us and this fdf force is unknown to us so if we consider this joint D, there are three unknown forces and only one force FBD is known to us basically. So we have two equations, so we cannot solve or we cannot find out the forces of the unknown because we have two equations and there are three unknown fo forces. Now if we come to the point A basically, if we come to the point A, so this FAB force is known to us because already by considering this joint B, already we have find this value FAB here this FAD force is unknown to us and this FAC force is unknown to us so if we come to the joint A so there are only two unknown forces so and we have two equations because all the forces are concurrent in nature so we have summation fx and summation fi should be equal to zero so after this joint B we come to the joint A so now we come to the point A here or joint A so if we come to the point A, this arrow, direction of this arrow is nearer to A, so we can assume this direction of FAB at point A. 
so FAB is acting in the positive x direction that is 3 kilo Newton already we have find this value this FAD value we have taken this upper arrow okay so this this is the direction of FA, FAD here in the down direction here and this arrow which is towards point A this upper direction will be will be because this direction is near, this uh, this arrow is nearer to it so this is the direction of FAC force when we taken the point A into consideration so this is FAC in the up direction here. So we write down the equation of summation Fx should be equal to zero and summation Fy should be equal to zero. So when we write down this equation of summation Fx, so that is FAC sin 45. This is the component of F FAC force along x direction and that is positive. And plus three kilonewton force is also acting in the positive x direction. That is plus three should be equal to zero. So the value of FAC is coming out to be minus three under two kilonewton. Similarly, when we write down the equation of summation Fi should be equal to 0. So summation Fi should be equal to 0 means FAC cos 45 acting in the positive y direction minus FAD forces acting in the negative direction. That's why we take this as forces a minus FAD that should be equal to 0. We put the value of FAC in this equation and find out the value of FAD. The FAD force is coming out to be minus 3 kN. So let us analyze this force FAC. In the member S FAC, we assume that the nature of the force is compressive in nature but because the magnitude of the force is coming out with the negative sign means whatever assumption we assume it is opposite to that one means the force in the member is tensile in nature similarly in the member FAD we assume a tensile force basically but this force is compressive in nature so this way we see that if arbitrarily we assume some direction and that the magnitude of this force is coming out to be negative means whatever assumption we assume with regards to the nature of the force in that member that is opposite to that one. After considering this point A we come to the point D here. Now at this point D we see that there are two unknown forces FCD and FDF and these force FBD and FAD is known to us. So we draw the FBD at this point D here. This is FAD and this is FBD and this is FAD. This is FCD and this is FDF. So all the directions are shown to us. Okay. The, well, the direction of FCD is in the positive x direction. The direction of FDF is in the positive y direction. The direction of FAD is also in the positive y direction. And the direction of FBD is at an angle of 45 okay, in this direction, which is shown by this arrow here basically. Now again we write down the equation of summation fx should be equal to 0 and summation fy should be equal to 0 as we read in the previous case and find out the value of fcd and fdf. The value of fcd is coming out to be 2 kN and the value of fdf is coming out to be 5 kN where we solve these equations. It means that whatever direction and whatever nature we assume in the member fcd and fdf they are correct one. We assume fcd that is compressive in nature that force is coming out to be positive means this direction is correct means the nature of the force is correct in member C that is compressive in nature in member df also this value is 5 newton with positive sign here so means the nature of the force in member df is also compressive in nature okay so after this we come to the next joint after the point d we come to the point c and draw the fibro diagram at this point c here this is the fbd at point c the force FAC is shown here, this force FCD, this force FCF and this force FCE. So all the directions are shown here. The direction of FC is acting in a negative y direction. The direction of FCD is acting in the negative x direction. The force FAC is acting in the down direction here with making an angle 45 degree with this x axis. And the direction of FCF is acting at an angle of 45 degree with the vertical y direction is acting in the up direction. So we write down the equation of summation fx should be equal to 0 and we write down the equation of summation fy should be equal to 0. So when we write down the equation of summation fx should be equal to 0. So we got the value of fcf that is coming out to be under root 2 kN and when we write down the equation of summation fy should be equal to 0 we got the value of fce means forces in the member c that is 4 kN. So we see that both the values are positive here so whatever assumption regarding to the nature of the forces we assume in these members that is correct one. So in FCF if we see this is FCF we assume compressive force 
because the arrows are outward basically so that is correct one this assumption is correct here and in the member ce in the member c we assume tensile force because the arrows are inward basically so this assumption is also correct basically. after the point c next we come to the point f and draw the free body diagram at this point f here so at point f this fdf force is acting in the negative y direction here which is shown here this is fdf is in the negative y direction this FFH is also acting in the negative y direction here. So this FFH is also acting in the negative y direction. This FEF is acting in the negative x direction, which is shown here. And this FCF is acting at an angle of 45 degree in this direction, basically, which is shown here. So the value of FDF is known to that is 5 Newton. The value of FCF is known to that is under root 2. This angle is 45. We write down the equation of summation FF should be equal to 0. We write down the equation of summation FY should be equal to 0. So we got the value of FEF means force in the member EF that is should be equal to 1 kN. We get the value of FFH force in the member FH that is equal to minus 6 kN. Means in the member EF the value is positive means whatever nature we assume that is correct. So in the member EF we assume tensile force the nature of the force is tensile that, that is correct. So in the member EF the magnitude of the force is 1 and the nature is tensile. In the member FFH, in the member FFH, we assume tensile force, but the magnitude is coming out to be with minus sign here. So whatever we assumption we assume that is incorrect one means the magnitude is six, but the force is compressive in nature in the member FFH. Now after this, we come to the joint E. We come to the joint E and draw the FBD at this joint E here, basically. So all the forces are shown here on this joint. FCE is acting in the plus y direction, F E E G is acting in the negative y direction, F E H is acting at an angle of 45 degree in the up direction and F E F is acting in the positive x direction. So we know the value of C should be equal to 4 kN, we know the value of F E F that should be equal to 1 kN, we write down the equation of summation F X should be equal to 0 and summation F Y should be equal to 0 and find out the value of F E H and F E G basically. So FEH value coming out to be root 2 kN and FEG value is coming out to be 5 kN. Both the values are positive. So whatever nature of the force we assume in these members that is correct one. In EH, in member EH we assume compressive force that is correct. The force in the member EH is compressive and the magnitude is uh, under root 2 basically. And in the member uh, EG, in this member EG we assume the tensile force that is correct whose value is equal to 5 kN. Now after E, we come to the joint H here and draw the FBD at this joint H, at the joint H, there is one force FFH acting in the uh, plus y direction whose value is equal to minus 6 as already we have find out. There is one value FFG which is acting in the negative x direction, there is one value FEH that is acting at an angle of 45 degree in the down direction with the positive with the negative y direction and there is one reaction force from this roller support that is RS that is acting in the plus y direction. So we write down the equation of summation fx should be equal to 0. So when you write down the equation of summation fx should be equal to 0. So we find the value of fgh that should be equal to 1 kN. So fgh we assume the nature of the force tensile in this member fgh that is correct one because the value of fgh is positive one. If you are interested to find out the value of RH here so we can vertically balance these forces and find out the value of RS but here we have to find out the force in all the member of the truss. We are not interested to find out the reaction force. Here. That's why we uh, leave this equation. And up till here, we see that uh, the value of FGH is plus 1. That is tensile in nature. Basically. Next, we solve the same example with the method of section. So method of section is used when we are interested to find out force only in few member of the truss. So let, let us understand that we are interested to find out the force in member AC, AD and BD only. So this is member AC, this is member AD and this is member BD. So only in these three members we are interested to find out the force. So we use the method of section here. So we pass a section line in such a way that it should not cut more than three members in which the forces are unknown. So it only cuts the three members in which the forces are unknown and we are interested to find out the force in these three members. So it follows that the, this section line divide the complete truss into two parts that is the lower part as well as the upper part. So both the parts are in equilibrium conditions under the action of this external force, under the action of the reaction forces and under the action of the forces in the member.
cut by this action line. So let us consider this right part here. Either we consider the right part or we consider this left part basically. We got the same answer basically. So because the right part is simple in construction or there are few members only on the right part, so we consider the equilibrium of the right part basically. So here we, this diagram shown the right part only. The right part having complete member AB, the one kilonewton force is acting here in the positive x direction. This two kilonewton force acting in the negative y direction here. And this force is in the member F, FAC, which is acting in this direction, in the up direction towards A here at an angle of 45 degree. FAD is also acting in the negative y direction and FBD is also acting in this at an angle of 45 degree with the negative y direction in the down direction, in the down way basically. So under the action of this external force, under the action of these forces in the members and because there is no reaction force here on the right part, so under the action of these five forces, this right part is in complete equilibrium. And if we see the force system, so they will form a coplanar and non-concurrent force system. So there are three equations of equilibrium, summation fx should be equal to zero, summation fi should be equal to zero and summation ma should be equal to zero. So when we write down this summation fx should be equal to zero, so that is fac sin 45 acting in the positive x direction, it is minus fbd cos 45 acting in the negative x direction and plus one is also acting in the plus, one, plus x direction, positive x direction, that's why plus one should be equal to zero. Summation fi should be equal to zero, fac cos 45 acting in the positive y direction minus FAD acting in the negative this force is acting in the negative y direction that's why minus FAD then minus FBD sin 45 acting in the negative y direction and minus 2 is also acting in the negative y direction and that should be equal to 0. We also write down the moment about any point we can take we can take moment about point A we can take moment about point B but here we are taking moment about point A because these two forces are passing from the same point that's why the moment of these two forces are 0 and in one equation we can get the value of the FBD only because FBD force is unknown in the moment equation. That's why we take moment about point A here. So moment about point A is, this is the moment of this 2 kN force is 2 into 2 in the clockwise direction. This is 2 and this distance is 2 here. So this is 2 into 2, 4 clock in the clockwise direction. This FBD we can take two component, cos and sine component. This cos component is passing from point A, the moment is 0 of that force. The sine component is having a distance of 2 from this. Uh, point A, so this is FBD, this is uh, FBD into sin 45, this is in the vertical direction and multiplied by 2, this distance is 2 here. This is also acting in the clockwise direction, that should be equal to 0. So from this equation, we got the value of FBD, the FBD coming out to be minus 2 under root 2 kN. We put the value of FBD in the equation first, we got the value of FAC here, the value of FAC is coming out to be minus 3 root 2 kN basically. We put the value of FAC, we put the value of FBD here, we put the value of, we got the value of FAD uh, in the equation number second. So when we solve this equation, we got the value of FAD should be equal to minus 3 kN basically. So you know, we see that the FBD value is negative, the FAC value is negative and the FAD value is negative. Means whatever we assumption we assume with regards to the nature of the forces in these movements that is opposite to that one basically. So we see there this way how we apply the method of section to find out the force only in a few member of the truss. Thanks for watching this video on trusses where we discuss the what is the basic definition of truss, what are the different type of truss basically and we also discuss two method. The first is the method of joint and other is the method of section. We see that method of in the method of joint we have to move from joint to joint until we find out the forces in all the member of the truss and the method of section is only used when we have to find out the forces only in few member of the truss basically. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share and comment. Thank you very much.